Good shot. Yes. Thank you, Douglas. By the way, are you still running that private eye malarkey? <laughs> Off and on. I wonder if I could call on your services. Oh? Well, it's nothing alarming. It's just a family matter. Strictly between you and me, mind. Oh, yes, of course. But uh, can you give me some idea what it's about? How about my place this evening? Ah. <laughs> Could it not be dead with a feather? Oh, well, that's astonishing. You know, with rent going up again and everything. Excuse me, do you mind? Thank you. Whatsoever young folk these days, have the. So, pick you up at 7.30? Okay. Any particular dress code? Just your dancing shoes. Oh, to be footloose and fancy free, eh, Jeff? <laughs> Oscar, what can we do for you? Nothing, nothing. Uh, health. You think Mrs. Ventress will let you out for a couple of hours this evening? What? I think we might have another job on. I've just had Mr. Driscoll on the phone wanting to know if we've solved his burglary. Not here to report a crime, I hope, Oscar. Uh, no, Sergeant, just uh, having a word with Alf. I see. Well, see you later then, in the pub. Mm. Thank you, Sergeant. Evening all. The great retired, eh? What a life. The problem is that they forget that the rest of us have work to do. Not that there seems to be much being done. I thought I asked for a progress report on these burglaries by this afternoon. Yes, Sarge, but there isn't any. Progress, I mean. What about Driscoll's notes? Driscoll's notes? Mr Driscoll marks every fifth pound note with a red dot when he's counting up the day's takings. We've alerted the banks, but no word. No witnesses and no prints. If the gang only ever takes cash, we haven't even got stolen goods to follow up. I mean, where do you start? I don't care where you start, whether it be as long as you get a result. Three break-ins in one week does not look good. Now get on with it. Well, it's all very well for him. I mean, if you've got no leads... Yes, madam. I thought I'd better bring them in, even though I'm tempted, as I told Iris. Right. Someone pushed them through my letterbox in an envelope. So, you can check it out. Well, I'm sure we can, Douglas, but we'll need some aid. Pass that photo. That's him. Well, he's a nice looking lad. Oh, yes. Very much like Douglas at the... Uh... Apart from the hair. Darling, that's how they all... Quite ridiculous. Looks like a ruddy girl. Anyway, his name's Ian. He's 19 years old, and you last saw him... Three months ago. Since then, not a peep. He did leave me a... Note, a... yes, telling you not to worry. A lot of good that did. So you haven't seen him for three months, then? No. And then suddenly... I mean, did... quite suddenly, one of the clerks at Smith and Fairweather rang us up. That's the, the, the firm he was working for. Rang us him. up and said that he'd seen him in Whitby. Some club. Whitby, I ask you. I thought at least the boy would have gone somewhere interesting, but no. Can't understand it. Where did we go wrong? Oh, I'm sure you didn't. Certainly wasn't Molly Coddled. I made sure of that. Sent him to the best schools. Sandhurst. Sandhurst? I thought... Yes, Sandhurst, and it would have been the making of him. He hadn't fluffed it. He didn't fluff it. He, he just... walked out because he wasn't man enough. That's the truth of the matter. And that's when you got him articled to the accountants in Ashford. Fairweathers, yes. But only after he'd spent months lounging about here, lying in bed until midday. Well, I wasn't having that. We thought accountancy Failing might be Failing the just... army, we thought accountancy would be a good, solid career. But yet again, he packed it in. All right, this is the... 
This is the name of the clerk who spotted him, by the way. And that's what upset me more than anything. The fact that he was living so close by, but hadn't come to see us. Breaking my wife's heart, Oscar. You have to find him for us. She didn't say very much, did she? A lad doesn't run off like that without reason. No, that's true. If her husband hadn't have been there, she might have told us what it was. Yeah, I agree. Look, why don't you go and see her? On your own. I think she likes you. It's very jolly in there this evening. Yeah, it makes a change from the Philpots. You know, it's a funny thing, Alf. There's a couple. They've got everything they need. Except the one thing that matters. We'll find him. A tenement, a dirty street, walked and worn by shoeless feet, in silence long and so complete, watched by a shivering sun. Old eyes in a small child's face, watching as the shadows race through walls and cracks and leave no trace, and daylight's brightness shun. The days of Pearly Spencer. Uh, the race is almost run. Nose pressed hard in frosted glass, gazing as the swollen mass on concrete fields where grows no grass stumbles blindly on. Iron trees smother the air, but withering they stand and stare through eyes that neither know nor care where the grass is gone. The day the pearly Spencer. Ah. Into, please. We've had a break in. I think some horrible man down here while we were asleep. Do you know how much was taken? Forty-five pounds. It just gives me the absolute creeps. Well, you don't cash up every night, then? Well, we count it, but don't always put it in the safe. Obviously, the till is locked. Yeah, but locked. just look at don't it. No, it. don't touch. Not until Sulko have been. And that's where they came in, that window over there. Yeah, and just look at my bag. It's just been chucked down on the table. Don't, don't touch don't it. Stay put. How much was in it? Twenty pounds. I've been saving up to get some new shoes and a coat. You know that red and black check one that's in Barker's window? It's really, really short with them big Dawn, ones. Dawn, let Joe think. Well, when am I going to get it back? The, the money, I mean. It took me ages to save that up and all my... Dawn! Stop. I'm sorry. I'm just shocked, that's all. I'm still shaking and everything. They say you never feel the same about the place when it's... Dawn, why don't you go and see if the baby's awake? Yes, go on. Sorry. <laughs> Macaroonies! Oh, what are you up to? Nothing. Uh, get that door started, my dear lovey. Just cash? Nothing else taken at all? Nope. No mess and no one heard a thing. Just like the other three break-ins. It's got to be the same lot. Yeah, it's got to be. See you watch younger. Any prints? Sokko are still there, but they haven't found anything yet. We could do with a witness. In the middle of the night? You'll be lucky. What time do we get back? It can't have been that late, surely. I must have gone through the village at, don't know, just before midnight, but I didn't see anything. Sergeant Miller, 20 pounds in notes, dropped through his letterbox. How much does that make? Three. Three lots of cash handed in. All old folk, all living in Ashfordly. Three lots of cash mysteriously dropped through people's letterboxes. Four lots of cash stolen from the break-ins. Are you suggesting that they're connected? They are both happening at the same time. No, that's just coincidence. It's a possibility, that's all I'm saying. What do you think, Sarge? Hi. Sorry to interrupt. Um, only I heard about the break-in at the pub and, well, I think I may have seen something. And fingerprint men swarming all over the place with little brushes dabbing at things. It's absolute chaos, I'm telling you. But they're not going to find anything. It's like the three other robberies, they said. What are the three? Haven't you heard? There's been three other robberies just like ours, all in the last week, all with the same OM. 
M.O. What? Modus operandi. Yeah, well, it's a mini crime wave. That's what Joe said. Yeah, and I could be next. Hey, not you right. Look, just don't keep any cash in overnight, because that's what they're after. Cash? Yeah, that's all they take, including 20 quid from my handbag. 20 pounds? Yeah. Do you know what? I could kill him, Bernie. I really could. <laughs> A little after midnight, I think it was. I was just leaving work when I heard a car passing in. Well, it's unusual to see a car at that time of night. Did you see what make it was? Yeah, a Ford Anglia with a woman driving and one passenger. Carol, that was me. No, it wasn't your car. I was getting a lift. Oh. Right. Sorry, I seem to be wasting your time. Empty! I'm afraid my husband's out. Well, it's you I've come to see. If you can spare a few minutes. Just a few details. It won't take long. I'll have to be quick, Mr. Blaketon. Mr. Fairweather doesn't like us leaving the office during working hours, and I really can't tell you more than I told Mr. and Mrs. Philpot. Right, well, let's start from the beginning, shall we? You work with Ian in the clerk's office, right? Until a few months ago, yes. And then he suddenly left. And you didn't know why? Well, no one did. And I didn't see anything of him until a week or so ago. Oh, why, that uh, nightclub in Whitby? Yes. There's really nothing more to tell. I tried to talk to him, but he was too wrapped up in his new friends. Hippie types, you know. Well, you must have found out something, surely. Where he was living, what he was doing, why he left home. No. Nothing at all? No. He was smoking, well, you know, pot. So he wasn't making much sense. Did you tell his parents this? <laughs> no fear. His dad would have gone mad. Right. Well, um, thanks. I think... Well, I don't think, I know. Ian's always been a disappointment to my husband. Especially when he walked out of Sandhurst. That upset Douglas more than anything. I can imagine. The army's been his whole life. He so much wanted Ian to follow in his footsteps. He thinks I spoiled him, but I didn't. I let him go to boarding school, didn't I? Even though he was only seven, I knew it was the right thing to do. To make a man of him, Douglas said. And did it? Well, don't get me wrong, Mr Ventress. Douglas and Ian Alpha always had a good relationship. That's why it was so unusual when they had that row. Shouting. Saying the most awful things I had to block my ears. When was this? On the night Ian left. I see. What was it about? I don't know. I asked Douglas about it afterwards, but he wouldn't tell me. He said, I mustn't mention it to anyone. Don't tell him I told you, will you? He'd be so angry. Oh, oh it's Parky out there. I'm Peggy. I'm chilled to the bone. I'm Peggy, what's this? Hey, you leave my things alone. Where did it come from? Give it here. Oh, it's not from the pub, is it? What? <laughs> from the break-in. How dare you? Look, I'm Peggy. Dawn has had £20 stolen from her handbag and you've got £20 hidden in our house. Uh, you, you can't help thinking, can you? I'm Peggy, I didn't mean to... Thanks, Dawn. Found your thieves yet, Don? 
No. Shame. Joe didn't see anything when he came through. It must have happened around that time. Yeah. Uh, he'd been a rugby club hop. Well, we both had. Didn't know you were rugby players. We're not. A friend asked me and I asked Joe. Good, was it? Mm. I was grateful. Good. In case you were wondering about the girl in the car. I'm not. What's up, David? David, whatever's the matter? Oh, she's just um, Peggy. She's gone and locked herself in the bedroom. <laughs> it's not funny. She, she could be in serious trouble. Your friend Douglas Philpot may be the big war hero and all that, but on the home front, he's a bully. Did uh, Mary actually say that? Didn't have to, it's obvious. I mean, all along he's dominated his lad, sending him off to boarding school at seven and forcing him to follow in his footsteps in careers that he hated. First the army, then accountancy. Oh, no wonder the lad scarpered. Yeah, but before that, there was some kind of showdown, but she didn't know what that was about. That's right. Well, I think we should leave young Ian in peace and let him make the break. Or let him carry on living in Whitby with a bunch of hippies. Well, that's what he wants, yes. Well, I don't think Douglas would approve of that somehow. Well, it's not his life, is it? Look, I'm sorry, Alf, but we've been hired to do this job. I just can't back out. You don't have to. I will. I'll get another round in. <sighs> Seen this? Not again. Yep, another mystery handout. This time the old dear didn't tell us. She rang the newspaper. Twenty pounds again. Always in cash. Always in an envelope. Can I see that? Wait, so if three people have reported it to us and one to the newspaper, I mean, how many others have been given money and kept quiet? Oh, no. I think I've just made a terrible mistake. All right, what about a compromise? I'll go and see Douglas and ask him about this row that Mary overheard. And you go to this nightclub that that clerk told us about and see if you can find out anything about Ian. He might even be there, if that's where his new hippie friends hang out. And if he is? Well, if he is, talk to him. Try and persuade him to go home. And if, uh, if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't, after you've told him how upset his mother is, then OK, we'll leave it. You're on. Right, well, I'm pushing the paper through the door now, Aunt Peggy, and it's it's open at the right page so you can read all about it. Please come out, Aunt Peggy. I've said I'm sorry. I didn't mean all those things that I've said. It's just that I was worried. I thought... I just... Well, you know, when I saw you hiding that money and then I heard about the money going from the pub, I thought... Well, I, I didn't think at all, really, did I? I was just being stupid. Well, anyway, now that we know it's happening to other people, we can inform PC Mason and then he can... Don't you dare blab! Well, the police are appealing for witnesses. David, finders keepers. 20 quids, 20 quid. And anyway, I've spent it. You've spent it? Yes, I've spent it. And it's not the same as what it says here in the paper, because these people live in Ashfordley and they're all old. Well, you're old. Um, I mean, you're not old like, like that. Well, you're not old at all. It's just... Just what? It's just, you know, in your old coat, you might look old. From a distance, to, to, to certain people. People who can't see very well. Actually, you know, he's not so much old that I meant, as shabby, you know, like, like a tramp. But a young tramp, or very young tramp, but... 
about all these mystery gifts we keep reading about, Joseph? £20 here, £20 there, all in cash, stuffed through letterboxes. All right, there's some, isn't it? Yep. Nothing on my doormat, mind you. I've never had that sort of luck. My auntie does. Sorry? She has that sort of luck. What? Oh, it's uh, no, nothing. David? Anyway, uh, anyway, it's, it's been spent. And it's, not, it's not the same thing anyway, because she's not old. If you... By the way, do either of you two know anything about a club in Whitby called the Vault? Yeah. Why? I hope you're not thinking of going. Yeah, because you can't. It's for young people. Sorry, Oscar, I don't think you'd fit in. All right, all right. Just part of an inquiry, that's all. What's it like, anyway? Well, it's just a disco. Loud music and dancing, that sort of thing. Seriously, Oscar, Dawn's right. You wouldn't get in. It's not me that's going in. It's Alf Fentress. <laughs> Alf? That's even worse. Yeah, all right, Dawn. Hey, look, why don't you go in instead of Alf? Just to look for someone. Well, when? Tonight. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I can't spare Dawn on a Saturday night. Well, what's the age limit of this place, anyway? Well, I don't know. I guess it's, uh, young. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to say anything, Aunt Peg. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, David, leave this to me. Did you or did you not find an envelope full of cash in your coat pocket? All right. Yes, I did. When I got back from Ashfordley. But I don't know how it got there, and it's not my fault. Where exactly in Ashfordley? Oh, I don't know. The Albert Building. I was delivering rabbit... something. And I don't know why you're keeping on about it, cos I've already spent it. No, you haven't. Uh, D David! Well, you haven't come out of a look. It's still here where you put it. There. Let me see. Mr. Driscoll's red dots. Yep. In which case, the robberies and the mystery cash are connected, as we thought. Excuse me, Don, as I thought. So somebody, for some weird reason, is robbing one lot of people to give to another. Robbing the rich to give to the poor, a modern-day Robin Hood. Something else, when Peggy found the cash in her pocket, she just returned from a place called Albert Building. Alf checked. That's where all the other people who got the cash came from, too. Albert Building? Yeah, that's on the new estate, isn't it? I'm not sure. I think so. I'm off. But she'll know. Carol! It's a very settled community. Mum down the road, Gran up the road, sister opposite, that sort of thing. Homes have been in the families for generations. Till this new company came on the scene. Sunlight Holdings, that's right. And started buying it up street by street, turfing out the tenants, raising the houses to the ground, houses that people loved, and putting up monstrosities like this. And that there is Albert Building. It's full of old folks rehoused from the terraces and they hate it. There's more illness here than anywhere else in the district and that's for the rents. What a high. I'll say. Anyone falls behind and Sunlight Holdings turf them out, getting a new tenant and charge even more. Maybe the thief is one of the tenants, stealing to help folk who can't afford to pay the high rent. But how does he know who to steal from? Well, that's what I was looking into. And did he get anywhere? Possibly. Well, let's see what Sergeant Miller thinks. Thanks, Carol, for showing us around. It's a real help. Any time done. David! Ah, oh, here he is. Just the man we need to see. Oh? We uh, wondered if you'd like to help us. With a little job we've got on, David. Uh, we need someone to go in somewhere to find someone. Oscar and I might look a little out of place. Yeah. It's tonight, David. Won't take you long. Go on, David. Little bit of extra pocket money. 
We know you like rock and roll. This is a list of the district councillors, and these are the four people that have been broken into. And all four belong to district councillors, is that what you're saying? Yes, and all four councillors are on the planning committee. Including Oscar Blackton? Yes. And you think that because these men gave planning permission for the streets to be torn down... By this company, Sunlight Holdings. Someone's trying to redress the balance. Yes, possibly one of the tenants. Yeah, sort of Robin Hood figure. That's what we thought. I thought? Well, the two things are definitely connected, Sergeant. The red dots prove that. Right, well, there are six councillors on this list. Four have already been broken into, so if what you're saying is right, better keep a watchful eye on these other two. You might catch your Robin Hood in the act. Any news? Uh, not yet, Douglas. Just a few more questions, I'm afraid. Now, you know what you've got to do? Oh, yes, Mr Ventress. I've got to find this man and tell him to come out and see you. Uh, politely, mind. We well, don't want to scare him off. Well, so do I tell him that you're a detective? No. Just a friend. Say there's a friend outside waiting. Oh, and if he's not there, I'm just going to wait and see if he turns up later. Uh, that's right. And you've got the photo. And have you got your money for the entrance? Yep. <laughs> right. Off you go, David. <sighs> Oh, David. That's amazing. The day that Ian left home. Well, I don't know where you got that idea from. If we'd had a row, I'd have mentioned it. Obviously. Please, Douglas, if it helps to find All him. right, Mary, all right. Well, yes, so... We had a minor disagreement. What about? Douglas, we're talking about the last time that your son was here. There was nothing, the usual stuff. You know, teenagers, his hair, his lifestyle. He'd made new friends, layabouts, I'd call them, with funny ideas. I said they were a bad influence and tried to set him straight. That's not the reason he left, Oscar, so don't worry about it. Just find him, that's all we're asking. Oscar. 
No Joe, no Don. I bet they've all gone out on the tiles like they did the other night. Oh, come on, Dawn. It was only some rugby club do. Yeah, well, apparently Joe came home with some woman. You saw him, didn't you? <sighs> What's she like? I've no idea. Well, if Joe's got a new girlfriend, we all want to know about her. <laughs> Shut up, Dawn. If Carol says she didn't see anything... Oh, Oscar. You were a long time. Yes, well, Douglas Philpot and his army stories, once he gets going. Is our phone? No. Well, that's funny. He said he was... Well, that's probably him now. Hello, Agentsfield Arms. Oh, hi, Peggy. What can it... David? Um, no, he's, he's at the vault. What well, didn't he tell you? Uh, um, it's, it's a club in Whitby. Oh, OK. Bye. Just Peggy wondering where David is. Are you sure Alf hasn't phoned? A club in Whitby! Mm. Hey, the cheek of it, Dave. There's us waiting and worrying all the time he's out enjoying himself. Mr. Detective. Too late. Well, you're not in uniform, so I think that's what you are. A plain clothes detective, yeah? No, Mr. Ventress. I am What am I doing? Looking for drugs, I expect. That's what you lot are usually here for. Oh god, perhaps I overdid it. This is the one. No sign of anything. Carol was a bit put out, wasn't she? Sorry? About you being in that car with a woman. Don, Carol and I are just good friends. All the same. Perhaps you need to explain. Look, let's go. There's no point hanging around here all night in the off chance. Yeah, might not have anything to do with it. What? Well, oh, the break-ins being at district councillors' houses. Might just be coincidence. Isn't it obvious? I told you, Dad. I told you I tried to pay back the people you stole from. Have you gone mad? It's no good. I've got the evidence now. I've been back to the office and got copies of everything. It's there for all to see. I've only got to hand it in to the right people. You're talking complete nonsense. Oh, I don't think so. Bad move, Dad. Getting me that job with your own accountant. Did you really think I wouldn't look at the books? Keep your voice down. Did you really think I wouldn't find all of those nice big sums from Sunlight Holdings going into your bank account month after month? How can you sleep at night? I said keep your voice down. Whatever it is you think you've found out, kindly keep it to yourself. 
Otherwise, we'll all go under, including your mother. And I'm sure you don't want that. Too late, Douglas. I've called the police. You fool! Quick, get out. Please, Ian, go on. do as your father says. Before you're arrested. Let them in. I'll do the talking. I'm sorry, officers. By the time I got downstairs, the thief had gone. Oh, just look at the time. Right. That's it. Oh. Definitely the van we saw parked near Philpott. Definitely. And that must be our thief. Looks like our hunch was right. My hunch? Uh, no. I said if we park near Albert Building, he'll turn up and do his Robin Hood thing. You said fat chance. OK. All right, he's off. I took my troubles down to Madden You know that gypsy with the gold cap too. in there and uh, I'm worried about him. <laughs> Hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> Don't say he's gone in there. He must have done. That's definitely the van. Right, I'll contact Miller. Excuse me, are you here in Philpot? What we got? Another break in Sarge, but the thief got away. We caught up with him at Albert Building and followed him here. He's in the club. Do you recognise him? I think so. Right, let's go. Hold on. Where's his van? Uh... OK, Terry. Let him through. He's round here on the right. Sorry? Your detective. If that's who you're looking for. David? Young get, get him out of here. You better find your suspect quick before he scarfers. He has already, Sarge. His van's gone. He can't have been gone long. Mason, come on. I'm sorry, I've got too many in there. It's essential that I get in, if you don't mind. Excuse me. Excuse me. What's going on? Where's Alf? Alf? Alf and David, where are they? Mr. Blaketon, I am in the middle of a police operation. Kindly remove yourself. You what? I am in pursuit of a suspect, and you are blocking my way. Peggy Armstrong, what's she doing here? Will someone please tell me what's going on?
Where's Alf? He's long gone, Sergeant. We don't know which way he went. What are you doing here? On a private eye job, would you believe? And ruining a police operation into the bargain. Look, Sergeant, when somebody's son goes missing, especially if he's a friend of mine and on the council, and I've been asked to help. A friend on the council? What's his name? Well, Douglas Philpoff. That's the man that's just been broken into. What does his son look like? You what? Quickly, Oscar, this could be important. Well, 18, hippy clothes, long hair. I'm not worried about him, I'm worried about Elf. Do you own this place? No, I just work here. I need the address of one of your customers if I give you a description. <laughs> I'd cooperate if I was you. I won't tell your parents where you are if you don't want me to. They just want to know that you're all right. So they hire a private eye? <laughs> Typical. Can I sit down? OK, so what do they need to know? That I'm fit and well? well you can tell Mother that if you like. You can also tell her there's no point in trying to get me back. I've left home for good. Mothers miss their sons here. A visit wouldn't do any harm, would it? Not while he's there. He? You mean your father? So you looked into your father's own accounts? Yes. And you found money there from Sunlight Holdings? Thousands of pounds. Well, who's Sunlight Holdings? The company pulling down all of those streets in Ashfordley, putting up the Gladstone estate. And my father and his chums on the planning committee were taking bribes to help it happen. In it up to their necks. I see. But then I hit on the idea of giving some of the money back. That made me feel a lot better. Hold on a minute. So it was you. What? You broke in. You're the one we're looking for. We? Who's we? Open up! Police! I trusted you! I didn't know they were coming, I swear! Hold on! Judas! The thief, Mr Ian Philpott, age 19, has accused members of the district council... All right, Gina, you don't have to go on. Members of the District Council have waven through highly unpopular planning applications in the Victoria District of Ashfordley in return for substantial payments from the property developers. As bent as bent can be. The old lot of them. Oh, come on. Oscar didn't know anything about it. Thank you, Dawn. I can speak for myself. Did you see David? Yeah, and he's fine. Sitting listening to the archers, happy as Larry. What's this? David and his hangover? It wasn't a hangover. Oh? Nope. We think somebody slipped him a Mickey Finn. Really? I'm pretty sure his drink was spiked. The only trouble is he can't remember anything, so he has no idea who did it. Okay. Uh, hang on. Can we buy you a drink? I only popped in to see Peggy. Have you told her yet? What? About the woman in the car. Uh, don't just leave it. Uh, hold on, Carol. You know the car you saw the other night? Now, the reason Joe was in it was because I'd been drinking and I couldn't drive. And we got a lift with one of the wives. She dropped me first, then Joe. Don, why are you telling me all this? I don't know, I just... Well, don't. I told you to leave it. Carol! Are you sure you don't want that drink? I'm meeting a friend. Oh, all right. What? Look, I'm sorry about Dawn just then. The thing about the woman in the car. Obviously, it wouldn't matter to you one way or the other. I know that. Yeah. It's just that he thought... That... He thought what? He thought that we... Look, it doesn't matter. Forget it. Forget what? What are you trying to say? Look, Joe, what do you want from me? How do you mean? Well, one minute you... And then I... I just don't know what you want. Let's have that drink and talk about it. I don't know, Joe. Do you have to meet this friend? 
There is no friend. <laughs> Good morning, Ossifer. Isn't it a beautiful morning? I heard this noise. It was like a car backfiring. <laughs> I wanted to see what it was. And... Leslie was just lying there. <laughs> Leslie Rumbold died 10 minutes ago without regaining consciousness. It's now a murder case. <laughs> <laughs>